Wow. I say good morning, Bridge Church. Uh, how did your Christmas go? Yeah? That good, huh? Awesome. Good. Some of you haven't recuperated yet. It looks, sound, looks like and sounds like. Let's, uh, let's greet our online church family. Can we do that? Good morning, Bridge Church Online. God bless you. Good to have you join us this morning. And uh, just, we're not, we're not going to pray right now, but what we do need to do is last week we had some difficulties and we're going to believe in Jesus' name, no difficulties in the media booth or anywhere else, right? Amen. Amen. Uh, how many of you speak the Greek language? Two of you. Okay. Nobody, right? Uh, how many of you had someone greet you this morning and said, Merry New Year? Anybody? Yeah? 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 Why Merry New Year? Anybody? You know? Well, as a Christian, you should be full of joy and you should have a merry heart, right? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, right? And uh, the expression that we use for the first day of the year and the celebration tonight on New Year's Eve is what? Happy New Year, right? Yes. Did you know in the Greek language that that word is the same word? It's used interchangeably with our English word called blessed. How many of you want a blessed New Year, yeah. right? All right, you're going to learn a Greek word today. Are you ready? Yes. Makarios. Say that with me. Makarios. Let's say it again. Makarios. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Makarios New Year. Makarios New Year. Happy and blessed New Year. Tell them that. Happy and blessed New Year. Would you stand with me all over the sanctuary this morning? We're going to go to the Lord at this time. Let's just lift our hands up to the Lord. Let's worship today. Let's express our joy, our merry. Let's express our happy and are blessed to the Lord this morning as we worship. Lord, we lift you up and we happy you today, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you worship. There, there is power, power. Shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, 
hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Before you're seated this morning, go find somebody that you know or don't know and get to know them. Walk around and visit with somebody. God bless you this morning. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. That usually takes care. All right, Bridge Church, let's come back to church for a minute. You know, get their phone number. You can text them later, right? The, uh, this normally takes care of any uh, problems in the church, and I'll do less counseling this week between y'all. <laughs> oh, goodness. How's everybody doing? Good, good. You may be seated. Let me share just a couple announcements this morning, things that's going on. First of all, if you are a guest today at the Bridge Church or you've been attending for six weeks or less, this is our tithe envelope. And inside here on the top, there's a place that you can fill out your information. We call this uh, a connection card or a guest connection card. And we'd like to know that you're here. Let us know that you're here and uh, leave us some type of way that we can communicate back with you. We want to know more about you. And if you have questions about the church, uh, our church cell phone number's all over the place. Send us a text, and we'll try to our best to make a connection. We've kind of been on uh, active duty at home. Does that make sense? It, uh, if we're needed. And so the office, at the end of the year, we close it down a couple weeks. Uh, people are coming and going. We all have responsibilities, but we're not officially open, right? Try to let our people that work around here have some time with their family and keep up with their workload as they can, right? And that's a good thing, right? Everybody say a good thing. And uh, it's good to, to make changes, and then you can come back big when you return to the office, right? A uh, couple announcements here. Remember, today, everybody say today, today is the last day of the year. So if you're going to give today online, any kind of way you want to give, uh, now's your opportunity to do that. We encourage you to think about your church at the end of your giving and just, just do an extra blessing. Do something above your tithes, your regular offerings that you give to missions or whatever, and bless the Bridge Church, right? Uh, not today, but next Sunday, we have a, a missions team outside the walls going to uh, Brookfield, and they do that at 2 o'clock on Sunday. So just that reminder out there, why don't you make plans to go and touch somebody's life. Get outside your world and love on somebody besides yourself, right? I'm waiting on an amen, right? If that goes across by the power of the Holy Spirit, it'll change your life, right? Yes. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody today. And uh, let's stand all over the room. Are you ready to worship the Lord? 
Are you ready to bless him this new year, right? It, uh, try not to go into my message this morning before we worship, but it doesn't hurt to do that. I, I think I'm going to read a passage of scripture. It's in my PowerPoint. I know that's way disconnected. I use the message Bible and, uh, it's Philippians 3, I'm pretty sure. There we go. This is the Message Bible. We're going to read down through a few verses. Can you follow along with me today? I'm not saying that I have this all together. That's what Paul's saying to the church at Philippi. I don't, I, I'm an apostle and I don't have it all together. I'm not saying that I have it made. But I am well on my way. In other words, he's on a track getting closer to Jesus. He said, reaching out for Christ. Everybody reach. Reach out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Jesus did it all, did he not? Next slide, please. And then he says, friends. We're friends. We're family, right? The body of Christ. Don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal. Where's your eye today, right? Needs to be on Jesus. Needs to be on kingdom living. Activating your life in the world system with the system from heaven that's been downloaded. What, what is that goal? Where God is beckoning in us onward to Jesus. How many of you want to be more like him, right? That's what the Father's doing. He's calling you to be more like his son. Then Paul says, I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. You know what? You can't turn time back, can you? You can't go backwards, right? 23 is almost over. If you had a goal in 23 and you've not met it yet, maybe you can get it done by 1159, 59 points, of right? Maybe, maybe not. But I can guarantee you this. If you'll make up your mind, I'm going to come right now. For next year, I'm going to become more like Jesus, right? I'm going to be a better worshiper, a better giver, a better server. Hallelujah, better listener, right? I'm going to think before I speak. Uh-oh, man, let me back up. I need to get to the altar for a moment. Woo, hallelujah, right? Come on, somebody, lift your hands up to the Lord. Lord, we honor you today. We worship you today in the beauty of your holiness. You're the greatest that there has ever been. Tell him that. Say, Father God, you're the greatest. You're the best. You're the most awesome. Hallelujah. Great, great, great is my God. Worship the Lord this morning. Perfect Savior. Thank you. We have a few challenges, it seems like, in our health this year. It keeps attacking and attacking. And on the worship team, I have to say, I'm used to just I know how to play the sax you know that's something I'm very comfortable with I've always had problems with words remembering it seems like and kind of got God was like but you need to do that and so no matter how uncomfortable it's like I will worship you God I will sing to you whatever you call me to do and this summer, then, I had a friend, she was like, well, aren't you playing the piano? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you need to start. <laughs> well, I've been playing a little bit on it. And uh, I'm not comfortable. But God will use me no matter what. Because I feel we're shaking off 2023. And going into 2024 may be uncomfortable, but doing what God wants us to do. Because when we do what we've been doing and expect different results, guess what? It's not happening. So this year, I thank you, Father, that we are able to shake off 2023 and, in fact, <laughs> the previous years that have been so hard. And we walk 
in faith and complete authority given to us by you. That this year of 2024, you are bringing a fresh new anointing. You are rising up your warriors to go into battle. We go into battle for you, God. You are rising. You are raising up a generation that has been dallying, that think they don't need it. God, give us the stamina, the help to just march on. We thank you, Father, because you are so great. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all thy hands, thy hands have made, I see the stars, I
those things that you think are gone, for those things you've given up on, for the things that Satan has stolen from me, he's going to restore all those things, the heaviness in your muscles. Pray. 
Just to see. 
listen really close, church. In a moment like this, God's glory is wanting to sit here on you. His presence, His person, His power. He wants to reveal Himself to you. And you're not a spectator at this moment, okay? This moment you are getting involved with His presence. You're going after the heart of God. You're going after the heart of God. So don't, don't miss this moment, okay? Learn how when this moment comes, you could be at home uh, and reading your Bible or not reading your Bible and a song will rise up in your heart that's called the song of the Lord. And when it does, just start singing that song. It, you think it comes from your memory, but your spirit also has a mind and the mind of the spirit is speaking to your heart and then you have to do something physically. You have to release it with your own mouth out loud. Nothing God does does he do in the quiet, okay? He's an expressive God. You don't have to do it loudly. You don't have to do anything like that. But you just have to say something. Say something. Say something. You have to say it where you can hear it come out of your natural mouth and then it turns into your spirit releasing worship to the Lord you can be in your car and hear a song on Christian radio right and, and a phrase will come up and you just need to release that phrase say it out loud in your car let it out of your spirit in Jesus name so in this last song we're going to the last song Beth no okay I want you to I'm coaching you. I'm trying to lead you into something, okay? And so I, I need you to release that. You can do whatever you feel led to sing, okay? But release it from your mouth. No quiet here. No mumbling. No whispering. Say it out loud. Sing it out loud. Release it by faith. Thank you, Jesus. you will have 
to surrender. Lift your hands all over this room and with your own, the cry that is in your spirit, just minister to the presence of the Lord. Just touch the heart of God. Say something to the Lord from your heart to his heart today. Tell him how great he is. Lift him up. Exalt him. Minister to him. Make yourself be made known to God. When you speak, you say, God will hear your voice and say, that's my son, that's my daughter. Glory to God. God made you to worship him with your whole life, everything that you are. Oh, God, give me more of you, Lord. I want to be closer. I want to be stronger in you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I speak healing over the Justin Blythe family in Jesus' name. No more sickness. Is that your house today? Do you have somebody you know, a friend, a family member, maybe your house? Release that cry. Say it out loud. No more sickness in my family in Jesus' name. By his power, I release healing in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tim Hazelwood is still in Florida. Timmy, it's like his son, Tim Jr., was in a car accident. Uh, he's had some really bad medical diagnosis. I mean, it, in, in the eyes of the doctors, he's broken records, you know, from what they said in the beginning. But he's nowhere near out of the woods yet. Timmy. Rise up, O oh man of God. Rise up, Timmy. Glory to God. Tim Jr. Sorry, I was his youth pastor, and we called him Timmy when he was a teenager. Tim Jr., rise up, O oh man of God. Rise up. Rise up, O oh man of God. Activate your faith. Hallelujah. Oh, I activate your voice. I activate your body. Come on, glory to God. When God does that for one, he can do it for all. If you're having any problem in your body, you connect to the faith that I'm releasing and you believe God to touch you. Joints be healed in Jesus' name. Spinal damage be healed in Jesus' name. Brain swelling go down in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Tim's wife, Jane, hurting in her back. Lay your hand on your back. You got pain in your body from joints or whatever. Be healed in Jesus' name. I release a miraculous healing touch in people's body. If you're on line right now, you need to grab hold of this in Jesus' name. No more pain in Jesus' name. We give you the glory, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jim Ando is going Tuesday to Oklahoma City for test. They did some heart valve work on him. We say heart valves work correctly in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, Dad Proctor, Charles Proctor Sr. goes Friday to Little Rock for a heart cap. Heart cap goes well in Jesus' name. Come on, church. They need your help right now. Hallelujah. Victoria's son has had a heart attack and he's looking at surgery and, and he's afraid. I come against the spirit of fear in Jesus' name and I speak to these heart conditions. You have a heart condition? Put your hand on your heart and be healed right now in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. There's a ton more requests that aren't stirring in my mind right now. But if you have a need in your life, just lift your hand and somebody will come lay hands on you right there around you. Look around, folks. It's one of your fa friends or family, your church family. Does somebody have a hand up. Give us a hair more light where we can see in here, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. If you see somebody, you lay hands on them. In Jesus' name, we release healing in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you to go right to the matter in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hand and somebody will come minister to you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come on, church. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Amen. Just bless the Lord. Amen. Bless him. Bless him in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking you to heal our land, Lord. Heal our government, Lord. I pull down the strongholds of pride and power and prejudice in Jesus' name. I pull down these strongholds over our nation. I destroy them. I destroy the works of darkness in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell him thank you now. Tell him thank you. You thank him however you want to, right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Lord, thank you for your presence today, manifesting yourself in our situations. Thank you, Lord, that Nathan Stewart is healed and whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, Jennifer Stewart's dad is healed and whole in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Healed and whole. These are people we've been praying for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. If you're not seated, you may be seated this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for his faithfulness, don't you? Amen. I do. I'm very thankful. Let's say thank you to this worship team. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, and uh, the, uh, appreciate y'all giving your best to God. I do want to put y'all on hold uh, at the end of the service. I want you back up here when I start to close, okay? And uh, the Lord will show you what to, what to sing. It, uh, hallelujah. The, uh, would you reach to your seat back there in front of you and get an offering envelope? Wave it at me so I know you got one. Just grab one. You say, well, I already gave for the year. All right, good. Get an envelope. <laughs> I want you to get an envelope today. Grab one and wave it to the Lord, a wave offering. All right? Now tuck it under your arm and let's give joyfully to the Lord today. Can we do that? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. He's a good God. The Word of God says he's a good father. Song written, good, good father. Amen. You can put whatever adjective that's good before God, and you got it right. Amen. He's wonderful, right? He's, he speaks to you, right? He's a speaker in your life. Amen. If you're not careful, he'll be a loud speaker, right? The closer you stay to him, he can whisper, right? We have that challenge in our home, a quiet wife and uh, an ear that doesn't hear in certain ranges from shooting guns, right? And uh, so my dear wife, I'll tell her, she'll say something and I hear her, I think she's talking to me, or Breezy, or God, right? Or maybe on the phone and I'll say, just a minute, I'll be in there, right? And I'm talking about real close to the next room, right? And because uh, she's soft spoken. But it's always worth the communication we receive from one another. Uh-oh, that's a good marriage, right? I want to hear what she's got to say. I want to know what's going on in her head and in her heart, right? And I hope she does mine too. I believe she does. And that makes us healthy. It's the same way with God, right? We're married to Jesus, right? And uh, when he's speaking, we need to go get close to him so we can get what he's saying. Amen? Amen. I challenge you to be a giver as you close 2023. That's the right way to end the year is by giving your life to the Lord, every, all your possessions to the Lord. And then give all, all, release finances. 
And when you're closing the door behind you, you finish something, turn something loose there as seed. Are you following me? I'm being honest with you. Uh, uh, I, I'm going I'm to digress a little bit and tell you a little bit of a story. Uh, I, I'm part owner with Daniel Gonzalez and Alpha Construction Services in Oklahoma City. And we learned that uh, we did two things. When we finished a job at someone's house, we would listen to them about something they couldn't afford but they were dreaming about. Like one lady didn't even know it, but we, she wanted an island in her kitchen, and, but she didn't have the money right then. Well, she came home from work one evening. We were already gone, and there was an island sitting in her kitchen with power in it, right? We planned for that, and she didn't know it. We snuck it in. We get, How much was that on that total job? It really, with paying the help to do it and all that, it didn't cost us time and material, maybe three, $400, okay? But to her, it was a million bucks. You know what I'm saying? You know how many repeat jobs we did for that lady? We probably did over a... a five to seven year period, we probably did close to $100,000 worth of work for her because we became, we, when her husband had a heart attack two o'clock in the morning and they rushed him to the hospital, who did she call? Pastor Preston, right? And she said, she said, Pastor, I got a situation. I can't even remember her husband's name. My husband's had a heart attack, right? And we're on the way to the hospital and I prayed with her on the phone. I said, you text me details, and I'm going to have somebody up there to visit with y'all tomorrow. When it gets morning, we'll be there, okay? Right? It's what you, you are who God made you to be, right? So leave a deposit, right? When you're closing this, this today's message is about close the door on 2023. We're going to close the door today because we can't go back and fix it, right? We can't change 23. You can't change this morning. It's already gone. Amen. Amen. So let's give joyfully. Can we do that again? Hallelujah, God. Lord God, today we give joyfully. Hallelujah. God bless you for being a giver today. Would you stand with me all over the room and then hold your envelope up? We're going to release a declaration of faith here in just a moment, but I want to bless you and your family. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak blessings over your household. I bless your retirement fund in Jesus' name. I, I bless your house and your cars and your stuff. It will last longer. It will serve you stronger in Jesus' name. All your stuff will work right. It will function right. Come on, somebody. Receive that in Jesus' name. I bless you. I bless your family. And I bless your income and your outgo. You will always have enough. And then you will have more than enough in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Give me a second. <clears throat> you ready? As we obey and give the Lord's tithes and offerings, we believe the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises, bonuses, and benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates, and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, gifts and Debts demolished and royalties received. Heavenly Father, we thank you that every chair here is filled with a person. We seek to be a debt-free church and a debt-free people. We declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today as you give. How do you give at the Bridge Church? You can mail it in up on the slides up here. You can mail it in. You can go to our website and give it in. You can use the Tidely app on your non-dumb phone, and then you can also drop it in the office door. There's a mail slot right there. Amen? Praise the Lord. Everybody ready? All right. Amen. When you're leaving today, your guest envelope, your guest information, there are buckets right here on the platform, those black buckets, and then there are boxes outside either door. As you exit, you can drop it in there. Amen? Give us unto the Lord and he'll bless you. What will he do? Bless he'll bless you, right? Amen. All right, bridge kids, bridge youth. I don't know, everybody else want to go to kids' church? Y'all want to go sneak in on Tom and Thomas? <laughs> Give them a hand, come on. Good bunch of young people right here. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, amen. Well, the Lord is good and greatly to be praised. Somebody. Amen?
<laughs> Woo. I want to get it the right direction. Amen. It's good to see everybody today in God's house. Right? Amen. Oh, that's the problem. My book's upside down. I thought something was wrong with my eyesight, right? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Let me get a little drink before we get started. While y'all waiting on me, if uh, you did not get a Christmas ornament from the bridge, this is Israel, the Israel star on here. There are different kinds back there. I don't know how many different kinds. But if you didn't get one or if you weren't here last week, make sure you do get one today. If you have a family member that's uh, shut in and not able to come to church, grab them one, right? Billy, get one for your mom. Tell her we love her. And uh, uh, she, she's a part of the Bridge Church, right? She's a part of this church family. And uh, she loves us, and we love her. And that multiplies all over the place. Grandmother's not here today. Did she get one last week? She didn't. Can you get her one, please? Thank you very much. We love her tremendously. And she probably can't wait till 2 o'clock next Sunday because uh, the church is going over there for her. Right, Kelvin? It's all about grandmother. And, uh, and uh, that's all right. I'm good with that, right? Amen. December 31, 2023 is almost in the books. <laughs> Have you ever had, I, now, now maybe you've never had this happen where, where you live. Uh, I can hear in the back of my mind, the title of the message today is Close the Door. I told you all that just a little bit ago. Close the Door on 2023 is where we're going to start here in just a moment. Did you ever have your mama say, Boy, you better close that door. Now, you girls, it might have been whatever your mom called you, right? And, uh, but, but when my mama said something, I always heard it, but I didn't always listen to it, right? I didn't always follow through. Because there are several ways. It could be the screen door. And I, back in the day when I was a kid, we're going to change that, aren't we? And uh, we did a, uh, ah, praise the Lord. we we'll cast the devil out of that thing. Uh, screen porches were important. That's where people fellowshiped in the cool of the evening. She didn't want no mosquitoes in there, no flies in there. Close that door, Preston, right? Or when it was summertime and whatever little air conditioning we had, right? You go out to play and you come in the house and the door's standing wide open. Preston, close that door, right? Close that door. More like the refrigerator, right? You can tell I, I had an intimate relationship with the refrigerator. Don't stand there and drink out of the milk jug, right? Don't drink out of the milk jug, right? Close that door, right? And uh, Carla broke me at drinking out of the milk jug. It, uh, I did it after I got married, and she explained that wasn't good manners. And so if I come to your house, I won't drink out of your milk jug, all right? <laughs> oh, goodness. The... Uh, Sometimes when something's happening, uh, I can remember in school, you could get a hall pass. Hopefully it wasn't a hall pass to go see the assistant principal. Anybody ever have to do that? Just don't tell anybody. You can keep it a secret. You know I know about that. And, uh, uh, but I can hear teachers, different ones, when you go out that door in the classroom, they want you to close the door. Close the door, right? Any of you... Your teacher had a desk out in the hallway, and if you misbehaved, you did, you, they opened the door, and everybody had to be quiet. The whole class gets disciplined because of you, and everybody's got to be quiet so you don't disturb the rest of the school, and you get to sit outside. Nobody can see you, but you can hear the teacher. It's hard to learn math that way, algebra, right? You got to see what they're writing on the board, right? And uh, I, I know that from experience and uh, causing problems in class, right? I was not a class clown, but I wasn't always well-behaved either. Amen? Neither were you, right? And uh, I want to talk first today about close the door on 2023. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. 
You can follow along on the slide. You can say this quietly or follow along. Brethren, this is the Apostle Paul. This is the New King James Version. We read this out of the message just right as we were beginning worship. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. In other words, I haven't grabbed hold of it all. I'm not finished getting more, okay? But one thing I do, he said, I do have this. I figured this much out. Forgetting those things which are behind. Remember, he was the guy that was enlisted by the Jewish uh, religious order to go out and find Christians and arrest them so that they could be murdered. That was the Apostle Paul. He had some stuff in his past. He thought he was the religious right. Okay, you with me? Right? If you think you're right, the place you need to be right is right with God, and you need to be broken and humble about it. If you see people religiously proud about who they are and what they believe, they've not been humbled before Christ, or they have and they've bounced back. Pride is a part of our flesh. I'll wait on you, all right? So he said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching. Everybody reach out like this. Reach out. What are we reaching out for? We're reaching forward, not backward, right? We're not going back into 23. We're going to walk out of 2023 today. At midnight, the ball's going to drop. I always watch it on Eastern time so I can go to bed, right? I learned that trick. Right? Actually, my son taught it to me. He would do both, right? And he'd come wake you up and tell you it's midnight, right? <laughs> Love you too, son. Go back, go to bed, you know. And uh, but we're gonna reach forward, reach out in front of you. We're gonna grab hold of some stuff in 24, right? Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. We're gonna close the door on 2023. We just talked about the Apostle Paul. What about the Apostle Peter? Do you remember him? He was the one that was always popping off, right? When they were talking about Jesus being on the, in the Christ, he popped off a little bit, and Jesus said to him, get thee behind me, Satan, right? What about Peter? When Jesus was arrested, he drew his, his concealed carry weapon, right? You remember me teaching about that? And he went after the, ser the servant soldier Malchus and cut his ear off, Right? Jesus was able to take his wrongdoing and miraculously put that ear back on his body. He did that so Peter wouldn't be arrested because it was a death penalty. He saved his destiny. Are you here this morning? He saved his forward, his future, because if you assaulted a Roman soldier, you died, period. And so he healed him, not thinking, not that he didn't think about Malchus, right? But he healed him. I have this little belief that God does something. He does it supernatural. I think the blood went away. The blood on the blade disappeared. Jesus took care of all the evidence that had ever happened before. So Peter, nobody could say, look at that man's sword. I saw him do this. Jesus was quick. He saw it in his spirit and took care of everything, right? God can reach into your stuff. That, was, that had already happened he can reach into that past moment and heal where he needs to heal. Amen? Jesus is buried. Well, Peter, I don't believe, is listed as the ones that are close to the cross when Jesus died, right? But he must have been watching from a distance because he saw Jesus die on the cross. He saw them take him down. And he was so down about it all the man that he was following is no longer on earth. He's about to be buried. He's gone. And he said, I go fishing. Now, there's two things with that. When you, when you are lost and in the dark and you don't know which way to turn and something happens in your life, go do something that causes you to relax where you can think, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. That's the favorite thing about uh, my deer stands, right? I worship the Lord there. I get, honestly, sometimes I get more work done there than I, way more than in the office, right? Somebody say amen. But also, but also God is able. He helps us. What about Esau? He fed his flesh. He gave up his birthright as the firstborn child for a bowl of beans. He gave up his destiny. He gave it all away to his brother Jacob, who became Israel, right? 
That was that Esau's destiny. Mm. He gave up his birthright to feed his flesh. What about Moses? God told him, you don't have to strike the rock anymore. From now on, all you got to do is speak to it, right? That's why it's so important that we say what God says say, right? We need to release this word. We need to have a testimony that's coming out of our mouth. There's the power of life and death is in the tongue. But Moses disobeyed and out of anger with, the, with, with all of the children of God, God's chosen people, he struck the rock. Don't strike the rock. What about Abraham? When he went before uh, king, went into the territory of King Abimelech, he said, yeah, this chick over here on this horse, she's my sister, which it, she was. It wasn't his dad's daughter. It was his stepmom's daughter. I think I've got that genealogy correct. Whatever it is, it is, right? The man's going to marry the girl. And he did that because he was afraid for his own life. He didn't care about his wife. He cared about himself. Abraham. Father Abraham. You remember that guy? Amen. He's just a man. What about David? He didn't go to battle, but what did he do? He stayed home that day, played video games, and watched bad movies of soap operas on TV. Right? Went up on the top of the house to look out over all the land full of pride and saw a woman sent for her, committed adultery, da, 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 da. Psalm 51, when he comes back to God, he said, oh, God created me a clean heart. Amen? We cannot go back without the cross, without Christ, there is no changing the past. God can deliver all of us from the mistakes we have made in 2023 or any other year in your life when you did something wrong. He can heal that in your life and he can change what you're doing that is wrong. You know the most dangerous place to be as a Christian is when you believe in your heart everything you're doing is okay. That is the most dangerous, most prideful place you can be. I'm okay. You're lying to yourself. Did you wake up this morning? You need help. I'm talking about Pastor Bubba, right? There's no going back. It's an impossibility to go backward in time. No matter what the sci-fi movies say, you can't do it, right? We all need to be focused on the goal. That's what Philippians 3 in that passage is all about, becoming more like Jesus. So we're going to close the door on 2023. Actually, it's going to close itself because after midnight tonight, it's gone. The second thing that I want to remind you about is we all have a future. Say that. Turn to somebody and say, I have a future. You see, God created, I say this all the time, we just taught on this from Ephesians 2 and 10, but I have a future because before the world was made, God saw me. He said, I'm going to create a Preston. I'm going to create whatever your name is. Say, God created me. He created me. He created me. He has a plan and a purpose for my life. It's up to me to discover that and then obey that and go after it. And that's where I will find Jesus all the time. Many Christians know to go to church, maybe read their Bible, pray over their food. They're nominal. That is not the Christian life. That's nowhere near an abundant life. God wants you to have a moment regularly being in God's presence so that you can know God 24-7. Do you know your spirit doesn't go to sleep at night? It stays alive and gets refreshed. For me, that's why it's real good when I wake up, God's speaking to me because my spirit's had a rest. My body has too. You have a physical mind, right, in my body, right? It's part of my emotions, right, my mind. But I also have the mind of the spirit, the mind of Christ, that comes from reading the book, right? You want to know what God thinks? Just read it. He's told you everything you need to know right here in this book. There is no new revelation. If somebody shares a revelation with you, if it does not agree with the book, it's false. It's not real. It has to come from this, God's word. When God wants to give more word, he'll do it. Now, you have a future. Jeremiah 29, 
11 says this. Let's look at the board up here. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. What does God think about you? Right? Well, there's my kid. Now, they're not listening too much. They're not obeying. They're out there messing up. Or does he think, that one's cool. That one's close to me. I don't have to work on them so much. They want to obey. What kind of heart do you want to have? A heart going after God? A heart that just wants to know God enough that you don't burn in hell in eternity. Right? You're missing the best part of your life. And that's fulfilling what God designed for you to do as a Christian. As a human being. Every created human. God made a plan for your life. And if you're not on God's track for your life, you're missing it. You're off, either on track or off track. Amen? It usually, the train usually runs better what? On track. Right? Uh, my right knee was demolished at about age 19 because I got off the, the racetrack racing. Back then, they didn't have four-wheelers. It was three-wheelers. And I was racing, went off the track too far, hit a hole in the ground that shouldn't have been there. And when I got up, my knee was as big as a volleyball in an hour. It was swollen up. That was on Friday, practicing for the heat, see where I'd be in the race. Monday, I went to the doctor uh, and had surgery Tuesday morning. Why? Because I got off track. Being off track is going to destroy your life. Get on track. Get on track. Because the track that God has you on, that he's made for you, is about your future. And the further you go down and you stay on God's track, it will produce for you for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. God doesn't want to destroy you. That's not, he wants to judge you with love. That's my kid right there. I, 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 there, I made that one. They're made in the image of who? The Father, right? There's something about you is like God, right? Find that and go after it. And then he says, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you what? A future. Say future. And not only that, he sent Jesus. It's a prophetic word for now because Jesus came to give us H-O-P-E. He did. God wants to help you get back on the right track and move into your future. Let me show you three words that will help you do this on a daily, moment-by-moment, -moment, daily basis. Three words. Are you ready? I'm going to use my mobile phone I don't think I made a slide. I forgot to make a slide. Well, write these three words down. We have these neat little pieces of paper uh, that are here to take notes with. And if you take a lot of notes like I do when I'm listening to a preacher, a uh, funeral, whatever I'm at, I take notes all the time. In a meeting, I take notes, right? Write it down. Helps you to remember it. Get you one of them and write these words on the paper. And I'm going to use my phone for an illustration in just a moment, okay? The words are this, refresh, reset, and reboot. Refresh, reset, and reboot. Now, right now, my screen is on, and I don't, I'm not going to take the time for it to go away. If you have a phone, your phone, unless it's a flip phone, I don't know. And, uh, but if you, I know if you have a, a smartphone, they, my, I know this. I have an Apple phone, iPhone, okay, so I know it works this way, and I've had one of these just about since they came out, okay, go back to iPhone 4, all right, and uh, I've had one, so that's a long time, that was sometime after 2005, because I had a Blackberry in 2005 when I was preaching in Africa in a crusade, and I called the church back home, they were in Sunday morning service, and we were in Sunday night crusade, and the leadership of the church, and the church greeted the people in Africa. That was really cool, right? But this one right here, it does something else, right? So I don't know about your phone, but I know about my phone. If I wait long enough, this phone screen will not go completely dark, but it will go light, and it's not putting out as much light. And so what do I have to do? I can just tap the screen, and the light on it comes back on. It's trying to save the battery, right? And it's trying to take care of me because I've done that. Now, so everybody say refresh. refresh, refresh. So if you're going through life and you get a little bit crossways with your track that you're supposed to be on 
and you do something that's questionable, when the Holy Spirit deals with you about it, you got to turn the light of the Spirit back on in your heart. You just simply say, God, I've been stupid again. Please come to it quick, right? Don't wait till the next day. Don't wait two weeks. When you get out of place where from the Word, your track flows through the Word of God. Amen? Everything goes by the book. So here you are. You're traveling. You do something that's not right. You know it. Boom. Refresh. Refresh. Refresh just takes a moment. You cut, the quicker you come to it, the stronger you will get in God. Okay? The more you will hear the voice of God. When you hear the voice of God, you do what it says. The next time, you're a little closer to God. He doesn't have to start screaming at you to get your attention. Right? Amen. So the next word is reset, okay? So I'm using my phone, and it gets all, I call it, crushed. It's all messed up, okay? So what do I do? It's not functioning right. The screen's stuck. It won't do anything. I take these two buttons right here, and I put them together, and it says slide to power off. That's called what? It's called resetting your phone. It's not refreshing, because I've shut it down, and I'm going to power it back up again. But it is resetting the computer that's in this phone. What happens if you really go dark, and what you're doing, you're not functioning like you ought to be? You've sinned. Can I just be real with you? Some way, you've committed something that's offended the heart of God. you got to shut down, and you got to reboot. you got to reset your life. Okay, now turn that button right there. There's the apple. Eve took a bite out of it. It's amazing how, think about that for a minute. That's, that's the word of God right there. Apple iPhones preach. Sorry, Keith. That old dumb phone that you carry, that Samsung. Y'all stretch your hands toward Keith. He works for FedEx, wherever they send him in the nation. He's been gone for about six months. He's glad to be home. Good to see you. Amen. So now I just swipe up again. I put my passcode in here. I forgot what it is. And the light's back on. Because now that took a lot more time, did it not? Are you here this morning? That took a whole lot more time. Because what I did was offensive to God. All sin offends him. But just like a good dad, when your child messes up in this level, you just kind of get their attention. You make eye contact. Say, boy, you know I love you, but I'm going to love you in a real special way if you don't change your behavior. Yeah. Right? And if as a son you got good sense, you're going to listen to your daddy. Nod your head. Right? That's the first part. But when I really have access to the family's third vehicle because it's the older one. I don't have my own. Dad's got his Suburban. My stepmom's got her station wagon. There's a bunch of us to haul around, right? I got the old station wagon, Ford LTD with wood grain on the side. And I took it down to Fort Jackson and we were playing. And I can tell you what happens if you put it in neutral and you hold the brake on and you put the accelerator all the way down and you jerk it into first gear, it will rip the drive shaft out of it, right? Now, when I did that, my dad explained it to me in a different way. Son, number one, when you called me on the phone, you didn't tell me you wanted to take the car and do what you were doing. You lied to me. Ooh. And he said, you know, that car can be fixed, but you've hurt my heart, and I'm really disappointed. You At 17 years old, you'd lie to your daddy. Ugh, that was painful. It's painful for him. It's painful for me. What when we fall into a sin trap? My dad said, you're going to pay for that car, and you're going to remember this. Every time you make a payment to me, it's 300 bucks, by the way, and that was with his, one of his best friends. Uh, his nickname was Shorty. He worked in the meat department for my dad, and he was short. And... Uh, and he said, and Shorty was a good shade tree mechanic. He could fix anything. I don't think he could 
He didn't speak, anyway, doesn't matter. But Shorty did all the mechanic work and fixed the car and it still cost me $300 and I didn't have a job, right? So I had to go make money somewhere. There's a price to be paid. Are y'all with me this morning? I'm trying to massage this into your heart. And that's the relationship with Father God. If you're doing something that's not in the book, you're living a lifestyle of sin. I don't care what you've colored over it. I don't care how you dress it up, right? You can put pretty on it, but it's still you are living a life of sin, period. There's a third level. And it's called Reboot, Factory Reset. Now, there are probably, I could probably pull this cover off, and some of you that are more techie than I, you would know how to fix that. But I would have to go get somebody's help. I'd have to go by AT&T and tell them, look, my phone ain't acting right, and it needs to get right with God, right? Can you help me? And they'd take that cover off. They'd go there. They'd do something and probably push a little button somewhere, and the whole thing would go dead. And you know what would happen? All my information would be gone, right? Because maybe even whatever I've got on my phone that's stored up in the cloud, what happens? It could be infected with the sin virus, right? But notice, I had to go somewhere. I had to get somebody to help me. I had to to do what was right with my phone in order for it to operate right. And let me tell you, there's help in the family of God. If you have, listen closely to pastor. I want you to get this in your spirit for 2024. And this is the way you close the door on 23. You need help. You need accountability. You need accountability in your marriage, in your job. If you're acting one way at work and another way at church, you've got a sin problem. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got a sin problem. Not that your husband or wife don't do that, okay? And make for a bad lunch today, all right? But it's the truth. But in the body of Christ, we are supposed to do this with one another. We're supposed to help one another, love one another, protect one another. If you're having a problem in your life that you're messing up, if who you are at home and who you are at church is two different people, guess what? You need a reboot of your system. It needs to be shut down. You need to be broken down, repaired, and fixed by the Word of God. And in order to do that, you've got to go get somebody that's real that can help you do it. You need to be accountable to someone. You need to have a brother, or you ladies need to have a sister. It don't work where the brothers have a sister, right? Right? You know, the Word says, you older women teach the younger, and the men teach the younger men. So if, you're a, if you go find somebody older than you that's paid the price for this, they've been through life a little bit more than you, they should be more, if they've been following the Lord and they're older, find you a godly man. I'm talking to you men, right? Find you a godly man that's in the Word and he's in Christ. And you say, listen, I need you to check up on me every day. I need you to ask me about this sin because it keeps coming back up in my life and I'm tired of it. I'm going to leave it in 23 and I'm not going to do this anymore. You ready? In 24, right? The only way I'm going to get more of Jesus is by leaving the past and the past and going toward my future. And there are people in this room, your pastor included, that we've got to close the door on some things in 23 Good morning. I know I can sense the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. He's convicting you. And that tells me I've probably said enough. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Thank you, sister. It says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, What's in red up there? Do you know how to get refreshed? Are you ready? Go to the first word in that verse. Repent. You can try to make your sin look pretty. You can sweep it under the rug and act like it's not there. You can ignore it, but it's not going away until you change. What does repentance mean? I'm walking in sin, and I'm acting like a Christian, but I'm really not right with God. Repent means to turn around completely 
Now I'm not walking in sin, but I'm going to go closer to Jesus. And I'm chasing Jesus down. I'm going to get in his presence and his word. I'm going to get in his house. I'm going to pray with my... I'm, I'm going to be a new person in Christ. Close the door on 2023. Third thing that I want us to look at is we all have a past. We talked about that a little bit. And, uh, but I want us to look at it in God's word. We all have a past. John chapter 20, verse 25. Hallelujah. I did put it up there. When, they, when they're a little bit slow to get up there, my heart always sinks. I done messed up again. <laughs> That's a great challenge. I got it right here in front of me, though. John 20, 25. I want you to see this is after uh, Jesus has resurrected from the dead there was a certain period of time that he was still on the earth before he ascended. That's recorded, the ascension's recorded in Acts 1. John's, uh, John chapter 20, verse 25. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. He's talking about, I always heard everybody call him uh, doubting Thomas, Right? He's just being honest, Thomas. He's just being truthful. Sometimes we get so religious that we're afraid to say what we're really thinking and, and, and where we need to help at. But listen to what he says, okay? They, all the other disciples, they had just had this experience. You can go back and read the whole story. I don't have time for that. We're going to close in about just a couple minutes, so get ready, okay? Get your heart ready to, to land the plane, okay? Worship team, it's a good time to come up here. Thank you. It, uh... The other disciples had just had an experience with Jesus. He was there in the midst of them. He was in the room, and he was there, right? The other disciples said to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. So Thomas said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of nails, put my finger into the print of nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. There's nothing wrong with God being proven in your heart where you know that you know that you know that you know. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good to be honest. I remember one time a lady had been a Christian for 30 years, and she came, she was in this service. She's not here today. She was actually a guest that day. It was a special event, and she came down, and I was praying with her, and I always ask. I can pray for a lot of stuff, but usually I need to be praying for what they need, right? I said, what do you need from the Lord? And little tears started running down her cheeks. She said, I have problems doubting my salvation. You know what? You don't have to doubt anymore, right? We got rid of that spirit of fear that creates doubt. That's what it was. It's called a spirit of fear. Boom. Boom been a Christian for 30 years, and she walked away that day from the altar. Let's look at, let's stay there. We'll go to the next verse in a moment. Everybody has a past. You know, I talked about that surgery. That was when I was 19 years old, 64 today. I've got a scar almost a foot long on my leg where they had to cut me open and go in there and fix my knee. Uh, it doesn't hurt anymore. Okay, uh, that surgery hasn't hurt me since a few years ago. Uh, he'll be here next Sunday. To, he's not preaching, but Susan Means, that's going to be at our ladies' event on the 20th, she's preaching next Sunday. Next Sunday, Sunday, next Sunday is our seventh anniversary as a church. And I've asked her to speak because I want the ladies of this house and everybody. She's a woman of God, full of the Holy Ghost, and she's going to come release a word to the bridge. You need to bring your friends and family. You need to be here yourself. Make yourself be here. But uh, all that's a good thing. We'll talk more about that as we close. But the, 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 what we are dealing with is we all have scars in our life. Her husband laid hands on me. That's what I was talking about. Prayed for my knee. Most of the pain went away. Uh, prayed for me again, and the pain was gone. 2016, I went off a short cliff about this high on a four-wheeler and got thrown up in the air about from here to that wall. And 
If my angels wouldn't have been with me, I probably got killed and ruined my destiny, right? Uh, and I, I walked anyway. It messed up my knee. And, uh, but back here in the office, he came to visit one day, and we're talking about healing. And he laid hands on me, and we prayed, and that was healed. That same accident, this shoulder was pulled up like this. I fell on a rock, broke, didn't bruise all this, no broken ribs, thank God, but I was sore. And, uh, but that, that arm, that had all hurt. It hurt for over a year. This was like 2018 or 19. And uh, he laid hands on me that day and God healed. It, it went, that went away immediately. The knee was a little more stubborn. It had been there longer, okay? And it was gone, okay? What, what am I saying? We all have scars. I've got a scar here. None of this had surgery. Uh, we all have scars on our body where things have happened. And, and, and we, have, we, we can compare surgery sheets. You know what I'm saying? This is what God's, you know, I have scars in my life. So when we talk about scars, I may not see your scars. You may have them covered up, right? You may not see my scars because most of them, we cover them where nobody knows about our past. Nobody knows about our sin. Nobody knows about the problems I'm having. We cover them up and we hide them from one another. That only makes the sin stronger. When you expose all that, it's got to be dealt with. And the real reason you're hiding it is because you don't want anybody to know you got a sin problem in your life. I'm not talking to lost people. If you are lost, you need to come to Jesus. I'm talking about Christian people. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen? I like what Thomas said. He talked about the nails he says, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, the Holy Ghost spoke this to me about 10 years or more ago, and he challenged me. Read the next verse. Are you ready for the next verse? I want you to see this. So here's Thomas. He hasn't seen Jesus. Notice what the word says. Is there a 26 in there? Thank you. After eight days. That day and seven more. It took seven days before Thomas saw Jesus. Let's read it. After eight days, after eight days, that blows my mind. I don't know about you, but after eight days, say that with me, after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them that time. Jesus came. Are you ready for the next four words? Are you ready to shut the door on sin? Are you ready to shut the door on 23? Are you ready to shut the door on your mistakes? Are you ready to reveal your life to God and be honest that you're not living the word of God in every area of your life? Jesus came through the wall, by the way, right? That's what the word says. His disciples were again inside, Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, stood in the midst and said, peace be to you. Now, how could Jesus come in in a closed meeting and reveal, I'm real, and when the reality of Jesus comes, there's no sin anymore? Are you following me? I want you to grab a hold of that. If you really have a close encounter with Jesus, it'll take care of the sin problem. You'll repent. You'll change. You'll make your heart right with God. If not, you've got some really, really, really deep spiritual problems. That recurring thing. You with me? Notice verse 27. Okay? Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands Reach your hand here and put it into my side, into my side. I like that. And what did he say? Do not be unbelieving, but be believing. Believe that Jesus is alive. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying we try to hide our scars. Jesus didn't have a wound anymore. 
Sin did not wound him. Your sin and my sin, Jesus never sinned. But we wounded him. There was a wound there, but now it's just a scar. Are are you tracking with me? Are you tracking with me? I, I used to be this, but now I just have a scar in my life. Jesus didn't have any more wounds. He wasn't bleeding. The wounds were not open. They were closed. He was whole again. And when you come in contact with Jesus, that resurrection power that did all of that for him, raised him from the dead, and made him Lord of the universe, come on somebody, has the power to take everything you've done wrong and make it right. It's no longer a wound in your heart. It is now you can go free. You need to point your finger at your problem. You're your problem. And you need to say, Jesus, I need to be obedient to your word, and I need you to help me. And you need to put your hand on it. You need to look and say, this is no longer a wound, but I'm going to let Jesus heal it, and it's just going to be part of my past. It's going to be a scar. Because we've all been wounded. Jesus, in Luke 4, when he walked in the temple, Isaiah had prophesied it, and he walked in there and read from the book of Isaiah He says in part of that, it's a prophetic word that got fulfilled in the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus read it out loud. He had Shemekha. He had the authority. He was the top level in the Jewish priesthood. And he walked in. When he walked in your church, you were under his authority, right? Come on, somebody. It's a type of who Christ is today. And what did he do? He opened the word and he read. He read. And what did he read? That wounds. He talked about wounds and brokenness and unforgiveness and sight to the blind, right? Are you, are you tracking with me? All of this can be, it has been fulfilled, but it won't be fulfilled until you obey and you grab hold. You won't have a wound again because Jesus heals the brokenhearted. He heals the sin sickness. He can help you forgive where you couldn't forgive people. He can help you love where you couldn't love people. He'll help you be who he designed you to be, and he will put you on a track for you to fulfill your destiny. I want you to stand all over this room, all over this room. And this is what we're going to do. I want you to search your heart. Holy Spirit's already speaking to us, already. The only reason he's not glaring about me is because I had to process all this before I could preach it, and I've already dealt with some stuff in my own heart. The grace of God will come to you when you say yes to the word. Yes to the word. Jesus is coming to you like he did honest Thomas, and he's simply saying, I don't have, I don't have wounds anymore, but I got scars. And you can be that same way. You can say, I'm going to turn loose of this stuff. In 23, I'm going to close the door. Don't wait till midnight for 24. Deal with it right now, right now in God's presence. Say no to the sin that is in your life and let Jesus deliver you. Say no to sin and say yes to going after Jesus with your whole heart, your whole life. Go after God. Go after God. He made you for a purpose. He has a wonderful life planned for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, you know where you're living. We're going to sing this song, and I want you to do business with God. Right where you are today, you do business with God. Thank you, Lord. Here is where I lay it down. Down. Every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, today, here's my life. I lay it down. Do whatever you want to in my heart, my life, my mouth, my words, my attitudes. Wash my sins away. If you need to be refreshed and repent, right now, just repent. Be sorrowful before God and turn away from the sin that is in your life and come back to Jesus and say, Lord, I want my life to be on track. Right now, that's what you need to do. I'm talking to you. Holy Spirit's talking to you. Be obedient right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I am willing and obedient. I will to walk away from sin and I will to go after you. You can be obedient but not willing and you'll be obedient right now and walk out the door and you won't be willing and you won't follow through. You need to follow through today. You need to follow through today. You need to follow through today. You need to find somebody that you can be accountable with. I struggle in this area and I need to be free. Men, you need to find a man. Women, you need to find a woman. You need a partner to defeat all this junk in your life. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you all the glory. I want you to say something out loud. I close the door in 23. Close the door right now. Just say that out loud. I close the door on 2023 in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we make a covenant with you. 23 is gone. Time-wise, it'll be a little bit, but in my spirit, it's gone right now. My past is gone. My shame is gone. My sin is gone in Jesus' name. And I look to my future. I go after Jesus with all my strength. All my strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I told y'all something wrong. Susan's going to be here on the 14th. Because I'm preaching next Sunday. Amen. And uh, just a couple thoughts. Got the ornaments. Every girl in here needs to leave with one of these. And not just leave with it. But you need to be here for this event. For the ladies. They're going to have a tremendous time. And uh, we need to be praying for the women of the house. Amen. That they'll stir something up in the spirit. That the glory of God will come into this region. Amen. Not just their own lives. Don't be selfish with it. We want to see the River Valley change for God's glory. Amen. And then if you're 50 or older, uh, if you brought your lunch, you can stay here and eat. Uh, come let Lori know if you got to go get food and come back like I do. I didn't cook this morning. But uh, I'm going to go grab something to eat and come back and hang out. I am a little bit over 50, okay? And uh, no shame in that, right? So let's have a time of fellowship. God bless you guys. Uh, blessed New Year. You want to mess somebody up the rest of the day? Instead of saying Happy New Year, look at them and say Bless New Year. Yeah. Change that in your conversation, all right? That's why I started with Mary this morning. We got from Mary to happy to blessed, all right? God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening.